Good morning, Click community, and welcome back to beautiful Orlando, Florida. We are here steaming through the day at Click Connect. Very excited for our live coverage all day long. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE. I'm joined by my co-host and CUBE co-founder, John Furrier. John, lovely to spend the yeah. day with you. I love the data culture here at the event, data value. This next segment's going to be fun. I am personally really excited because uh, we, I know we both like to play sports. I'm an athlete. We're going to be talking about analytics in sports and we have a pair of Martins here <laughs> to, yes. to tell us all about it. Martin and Martin, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. 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 You've got big smiles. You look like you came off the keynote feeling real excited. Yep, super cool. Uh, really interesting, uh, as always, but um, this was good. Yeah, I feel like the energy in here, I mean, totally packed house, good vibes even at happy hour last night. You must be feeling great. I want to learn a little bit more about this relationship. So Martin, you're at Click, GTM side. Yeah. Why did you bring this Martin on stage with us today? So Martin has one of the best stories we've got in sport today. Can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it. It's about ice hockey. Now, I've got to bring him because I know literally nothing <laughs> about ice hockey. <laughs> I'm from the UK. It doesn't kind of translate over to me. Yeah. So he's going to be the expert walking through that. Whereas I'm kind of like a cycling background and football, that's a football, mm -hmm. a round ball football <laughs> for, for us in the, uh, the other side of the pond. Really everywhere else in the world. Yes, yeah, really yeah. everywhere else <laughs> in the world, that's absolutely correct. But he's, he's here to kind of just go through how analytics, analytics has kind of transformed the Malmo team. So I think I probably should let you Let's do a little hear bit it. of Now I want to know, Malmo Redhawks, shout yep. out to the Malmo Redhawks. Mm. What have you done to transform the team? Yeah, so, um, so I'm obviously a data click nerd. I'm also a hockey nerd. And uh, a couple of years ago, Malmo Redux came to me because um, I had all this data. All this data generated from sensors on the bodies, wearables, AI generated data from the games. Uh, and they had so little time and so many different people looking at this data. And they wanted to, can we make sense of this? Can we see this together? Uh, can we draw conclusions on how, how do we practice? How do we play? How do we feel? Uh, just to get better. And um, of course, we got Click Cloud, so we brought all that data into our platform and uh, together with Malmo Redux developed this product and, uh, and they've been using this for a couple of years now. How long have they been instrumenting the players and what? give us a scope of the, the data uh, ingestion. What, how is it being measured? What's some of the details? Yeah, so um, the game related metrics are obviously, everyone is looking at that, so yeah. passes, shots, yeah. and so on. Uh, what they wanted to do was to combine that with the physical data to mm -hmm. see how people are, uh, how, how much the body is responding to, to the play. And also, mostly important, I think, uh, during practice to make sure that everyone is ready, to, ready for the game. Uh, practice individually and prevent injuries. Uh, hockey players are quite expensive and you want them on the ice and not yeah. on the bench. Yeah. So, um, prevent injuries and, uh, and be better at rehab as well to measure that you're ready to come back or not. How quickly were you able to ramp up this program? How good they were? How, how quickly were you oh. able to implement this? Oh, pretty, uh, pretty fast actually. So uh, the hockey season is right now, uh, the season is over. In September the season starts and it was at this time, three, four years ago we started and we were ready when the season started. So like two, three months from the idea and to, um, to they were using it before the, uh, the next season. You know, one of the big things in hockey, and, and we see that in NFL, uh, our football in, in America, is that injury prevention has been a big part of the data. Mm -hmm. uh, has that come up um, on the data sets? Yeah. Is that streaming off the player's body? Do you look at like the physicality of it? Yeah, absolutely. And they look at, um, if something happens during the game, you get a, get a shot or an injury, you might not notice, but mm -hmm. your body notices. So you might compensate, uh, your body will compensate, and therefore they can see that live real time and take that player off before he gets overstressed injuries and stuff like that. Yeah. Do you guys rank the players? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> How we does do. that work? <laughs> um, it's, it's almost yeah. like you know you play uh, NHL on, uh, on yeah. Xbox yeah. Or, or PlayStation, so they like that. It's, and it's and like they know they're being part. ranked, right? So they kind yeah, of that's all the nature different. of their life. <laughs> yeah. Take us through the, uh, one of the things, not to get into the weeds and, and nerd out on the data, but the, what jumps out the keynote is the structured and unstructured data handling is really phenomenal with Click, and that's a major benefit you're starting to see with Generative AI as well. Um, you got to stream the data, you got unstructured data. Take us through the, the, data, the data side of it um, in hockey and then also cycling, and you mentioned football, yeah. um, soccer or football. Um, you got a lot of unstructured data, multiple data sources. 
Is that an issue anymore? Or is that going to go away with the Gen AI? What's the, what's the, uh, the, the angle on, um, the, on the unstructured versus structured data? Yeah, I'll answer quickly and then how over yeah, to you. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, like uh, on the keynote, um, data quality is absolutely key, right? Everywhere, in normal business, in mm -hmm. sport analytics, so you got to get the data quality right. Uh, if you do that, then yes, Gen AI will absolutely help you also in sports. I got a question from Malmö Redox GM a couple of weeks ago. When can we get Gen.I to do my work? Um, <laughs> so, we'll be there, but uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you, Martin. So, um, I'm going to start with cycling. Yeah, now, click sponsor a cycling team, a pro cycling team called Q36.5. Okay, and uh, they've got an ambition to get into the Tour de France and eventually win the Tour de France. Now, analytics helps them in uh, kind of various ways. There is a logistics angle to this, uh, and that logistics being they have 1,100, 1100 flights, 26 players from all uh, top riders all over the world. Uh, they've got 26 vehicles that uh, have got to be shipped everywhere and follow those teams. So data coming from those systems is obviously the performance stuff, but every sports person has a contract, a PDF document with millions and millions of words in that. Yeah, and with uh, unstructured meetings structured, I can then get a complete picture of maybe they have riders, maybe they have kind of different kind of uh, aspects they want in that contract compared to their performance data. And when you're kind of comparing hockey players, we also kind of compare cyclists and football players. So if you can imagine a dartboard and a radar chart, we kind of look at how fast they can run, you know, how their sprints are, their accelerations and things like that. But there's a new side to sport which has come on, which is the mental side. How do people react when put mm. under pressure? How do people react when they get probably bumped in hockey a bit more than uh, in football because we just go down? But, uh, you know, and also kind of um, if you are in cycling, there's a breakaway. Yeah, a couple of, couple of riders go up the road, whether it be men or women, up the road. And then it's, can you chase them down? Are they good enough to get away? Having that information on your fingertips as a Doug Ryder that runs the team, when they're in that car following that pack around, having that information to you to kind of make it, okay, go for it, or okay, you go catch them. Because how many times do you see them catch when the finishing line is just in front of that pack, the, the team that's just got away is quite incredible. So it is very, very small margins that, uh, that we're dealing here, and analytics is absolutely a must for that. I mean, it's a great example of yeah. the data-driven um, you know, bumper sticker we talk about, hey, data-driven, performance, fine-tuning that piece of it becomes really the big part of this. Yeah, so um, the one that I like, uh, I mean, and it's some, some people find it a little bit boring, but it's a time trial. So when you have a time trial, you know, it's you against the clock on that bike. And there's a mental picture here where you have, an, uh, and it's a great quote uh, from, a, from a pro cyclist from many years ago, is that when you're cycling and when you're kind of trying to get to the end, you know, if you think I'm going to make it, you have not gone on hard enough. If you think you're not going to make it, you haven't, you know, you've kind of blown up. The mental picture you've got to have is maybe I can get there. Maybe I can get there. And they are running off a computer that is giving their FTP value. So that's their functional threshold power that they can do for an hour and sustain that. And they're constantly looking at that and thinking about it. And actually, when you watch them closely, the ones that are starting to get unstressed, they pull their mics out, the earplugs out, because they don't want to hear what people are telling them, and they kind of throw their computers off the side. But there is kind of, you know, that is minute margins. It's called marginal gains in cycling. And I just want to come back to something uh, that uh, we kind of talked about earlier with data, and that's recovery. So we've got the Euros, the Euros 2024. Sweden didn't quite make it there, unfortunately. <laughs> what, what sport but, is it? <laughs> it's football slash football. soccer. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and um, the recovery of players is phenomenally important. You see managers come out and go, okay, my player's going to be out for six weeks. That, uh, you know, there is at least four football clubs in the UK that we got sensors all over them. You time their sprints, you monitor their recovery. That six weeks estimate comes from a predictive outcome from our software looking on a football player. So there's kind of like, uh, that's a very, very predictive, we haven't kind of covered that, we covered unstructured and structured, yeah. but that is a predictive yep. look of what is going to happen to a footballer mm -hmm. at that point. And that's based on footballer data. Oh yeah, it's absolutely the, from, their from data. The whole team. So do you think there will, and actually I'm curious because you've, you've been working with the, with the Red Hawks for a number of years, 
Do you think that this will be a real differentiator between teams that are all in on analytics and quantified self for their athletes versus those who aren't? Do you think we'll start to see a delineation there? Is it, is it a, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. I used to um, compare when I talk to the teams, like, uh, you know, you have your equipment and that always um, evolves. And if you go back, there you're playing with wooden sticks in ice hockey. Now you have the composite sticks. And if someone comes with the composite stick, of course you use it because it's newest. Everyone wants to have the new thing because otherwise you will lose. And they have to look at the analytics of data and hockey at the same way. If you don't do it, you will lose. So I think they're going to adapt to that as much as they're interested in all the new technology on the skates and gear as in data and analytics. It's I would new. imagine it's got to be a recruitment tool as well for the for the clubs or the teams, whether it be cycling or anything. Absolutely. Have you Absolutely. noticed that? Yeah. Oh yes. So I mean. Um, Looking at, uh, for, certainly for football players, they start as young as like four, five. Yeah, and football teams come and pick them at the age of seven and eight and bring them into their family and kind of nurture them through. Imagine being able to predict that, because they have hundreds and thousands of boys and girls that go through this program, and only 1% mm -hmm. of the 1% kind of make it through on, that, uh, on that kind of, those kind of programs. And kind of across from, uh, a European sport into, into the NFL. We've got Lewis Rees Samet, who's, uh, who's coming for, uh, from rugby into the NFL. You know, that, that is, they have looked at his stats, his height, his speed, his power, because they won't make a chance on a human being like that if they're not going to make it in the NFL. And he's made a team. You know, so, you know, over, the, over this side of the kind of the pond, we're very interested to see how, how he's actually going to perform, because he was a phenomenal rugby player, a very fast human being. You guys are hitting on a use case in sports. Obviously, it's been, you know, data's been around for sports for a while, but not to the ele level of penetration of everything being measured and instrumenting all aspects of the operation, players, supply chain, logistics, performance. Um, what do you, have you learned, and how would you share folks watching that are wanting to go the next level in, with data? What, what, what are some of the learnings that you guys have seen folks want to take the next step building that foundation or getting going with, with the data? What's your advice? So I can go first. Okay, so, you sure. know, I was going to pick on a different sport here. Now, Formula One for me just Ooh. simply rocks stats, numbers, data. You know, they have the speed, the power going round corners, and that is, you know, telemetry data, real-time data that is streamed immediately to a terminal so they can see what is going on. And it's kind of like, it's a, it's a team, team sport then it suddenly becomes a team sport, even though there's an individual in a very, very fast car. So what I kind of see is, um, you know, the data has changed the way that a, a manager, and certainly in a, a pro team, would look at things. They can look at the competition in far more detail than they ever could. And sometimes they pick, why did they pick that player? Why have they put that person there? That is either to negate the strength of someone or to dominate the strength of something. That is analytics. And to me, those fine margins are going to win you or lose you that game. And losing in sport gets you, certainly gets you relegated uh, uh, our side. But uh, it, it just simply is so, so important. And, uh, and it's, to me, it's always been marginal gains. And coming back to um, you know, the AI piece, if they don't get starting to look at predictive, they're going to get left behind. And yeah. the next thing you know, they're going to be relegated. They're going to be playing. So your in a advice is decision. get in the data game to implement, impact the strategy and the, the aspect of the sport whatever that sport is, yeah. in real time. Oh, absolutely, I mean, humans are athletes. You know, it's now most sport, they are peak, yeah. peak athletes. Yeah, and there's also strategy <clears throat> that has come into it as well. You know, the, the way we play the, the games are very, very different from they were 20, 30 years ago, when I might have put on a pair of boots at that point. You know, it's changed completely. You know, and uh, the way that I keep, keep wanting to do it, data is the thing that keeps pushing these things forward. <laughs> yeah, you know, the people that run faster, you know, when I was young, you do the 100 meters run, I think it's the 40 yard dash in the NFL. You know, the faster you are at that, the faster you're going to make it into a team. You've got an asset to be able yeah. to do that. But now we look at you as a whole human rounded individual, your mental state, your performance, yeah. physique and power. It's it's amazing. I mean, yeah. the, the holistic picture of an athlete. I'm just thinking of, you know, in the U.S. we have baseball cards. We used to trade right. them and collect them when I was a little kid. And I'm wondering if your baseball card now would have all your biometrics, essentially. Right. And, and, and your analytics. I mean, it's kind of cool. You could just scan a QR code and then here's my updated, here's my rest, here's my whatever. Have you found, and I'm going to bring this to you, 
nearest Martin. Have you found <laughs> have you found that that athlete wellness has gone up as a result of this? You know, we're talking about injury prevention, we're talking about a lot of things. Rest is obviously huge in recovery. Yeah, I'd like to say so. I do have too little data because I think we need to do this for many, many teams for many, many years to actually make sure that we, we see that. But we've seen that, yes. Uh, a lot about recovery, as you said, um, measuring uh, sleep and how you recover after away games and stuff like that. Sweden is um, a very tall country, so you spend a lot of time in uh, in buses uh, between games and sleep bad, and then you have games every second uh, day or so. Uh, and absolutely, there's uh, been, um, uh, we can see and measure that that's been improved a lot uh, already now. I mean, I can imagine you look at all little pieces of data like you change suppliers on transportation, maybe the winds go up, hotel selections, better beds, better sleep. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. little things yeah. might jump yeah, out. It's I mean, true, all data is, could open up. Yeah. Absolutely, food. What's the biggest thing that you found? What's this? Um, share with us an um, the coolest thing that uh, you've discovered in hockey um, with data that surprised you or um, might surprise someone. Oh, uh, good question. Um, I, I, I think I'll. What's interesting is that you cannot replace. Um, I mean, we're here. We love data. We love analytics. <laughs> but you can never replace the coach or other people behind. You help them because they have skills and they have gut feelings. And I think that's the extra percentage that will make you win is always going to be up to you being skilled and have the gut feeling to combine with the data you have. So I guess also understanding the, the need of the, the, the personal skills and the, 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 the addition with the data. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so data is not going to do everything for you because then everyone. Yeah. I can imagine that um, the data will help the, the general managers figure out the makeup of a team. If the, if the strategy is to be faster, maybe you hit the different makeup on body type, personality, yep. or if you want to go stronger and say you play bigger, some coaches might prefer size and, right. and durability. Yep. Oh, yeah. This all comes into play. Yep. Oh, absolutely, yeah, the, the physical side, you know, you can, you can play skill sides, you can okay. play physical sides, and it, and it depends who you are, where you are, in what position in the league. You may come against a team that's struggling for their kind of life <laughs> at the bottom of a table, and they will fight for everything. <laughs> yeah, and uh, maybe it is fighting fire with fire at that point is yeah. the way to kind of get through those things. But, but one thing that I think, because hockey is a little bit different from football, so there's a lot of players on and playing different uh, uh, forwards together, and the, the possibility for the GM and the coach to predict, it, what if we put these three players on, based on all their data, how would yeah. they play together uh, against the other team's yeah. best players? To try to predict that is really, really uh, cool because um, that's, that's, uh, that's a deal yeah. breaker for them yeah. to, to be able to, not just chance, but actually yeah. build it up on. Situational awareness becomes yeah. like power plays versus yes. man advantage. Yeah. These all come into situational yeah. decision making. And, yeah. Yep. All right, this has been really thrilling. I have one question for you, because this is obviously moving fast to mm -hmm. your point. You're looking forward to having more data points about, say, the Red Hawks, uh, depending on what happens next. So when we have you on the show next year, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't say today? Definitely, I'm looking forward to bring GNI into our product uh, to um, help the teams be even faster and better. Um, save time for them and do what GNI can do for you. Uh, assist the people uh, to see that that has um, added another percentage to, um, to the quality. Yeah, GNI. I love it. Yep. We didn't even say AI in this whole discussion, actually. I was just thinking that. Wow, good job. Nice job yep. being not too buzzy. <laughs> we actually talked about the real stuff. What about you, Martin? I'm, I'm going to go with Gen AI, AI too. I mean, uh, we did talk a little bit about kind of predicting things moving forward, but Gen AI is going to make a huge difference because what it's going to do, it's going to make, uh, you know, coaches have skills of managing teams. They have skills of kind of um, bringing players on and bringing forward. They don't necessarily have the time to look at data to kind of get hold of all the information that they have got. They want to simply ask something, a question, get a, a accurate response back that they can trust, use that data, and then help that player and help their team and hopefully win. 
I love it. Well, we hope that your cycling team makes it to the Tour de France. We'll be thank rooting you. for them and rooting for the Swedes in hockey for sure. Don't worry about that. Martin and Martin, thank you so much for being here. This thank has you. been really fantastic. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you for having me. John, always a yeah. pleasure. And thank all of you for tuning in to our fantastic and insightful coverage here at Click Connect in Orlando, Florida. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.